listening to Chief Flynn. And Captain Aaron Rapp, the commander of the 1st District. At approximately uh, 7 o'clock this morning, a 56-year-old male driving a car was approached by an armed individual at the corner of East Michigan and Lincoln Memorial Drive. This individual pulled a semi-automatic pistol on him and tried to open the locked passenger side door. The victim pulled away from the scene, at which time the suspect fired one round at his car. The victim very alertly drove around the corner and dialed 911 to relate what happened to him and then circled the block to see if he could ascertain where the suspect had gone. When the police arrived, the suspect, excuse me, the victim remained at the scene and provided the police with a full description of the armed suspect who had fired a round at him. Police entered the building in an attempt to search for the suspect armed with the description given to them by the victim. On the second floor of the transit center, they encountered the suspect who was holding a semi-automatic pistol in his hand. The officers confronted him and made numerous demands for him to drop the weapon and attempted to negotiate with him. It was during this period of time that the suspect engaged in threatening behavior with that pistol, whereupon three members of this agency fired upon him. The suspect was grievously injured. Police officers commenced life-saving attempts on him. The fire department responded and also attempted to revive the suspect, but he was pronounced at the scene. The district attorney's office has been notified and is on the scene and has also commenced an investigation as has the Metro Investigations section of the Specialized Investigation Division. Fire and Police Commission has been notified. The mayor's office has been notified. There are many aspects of this investigation that still need to unfold as it's still in its early stages. The officers that were involved in this are all from District 1. One is 35 years old, a male, with 16 years of experience with the Milwaukee Police Department. A second is 37 years old, male, with 11 years with our department. The third is 41 years old, with 21 years of experience. We also had on that we had on the total amount of experience is 48 years total police experience engaged with this. As is our usual protocol, they will all be placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of this investigation. Now those are the details we have now. As you can understand in the early stages of the investigation, some of these details will be clarified. Some of these details will probably need to be corrected, but the investigation is ongoing. We have not yet identified the suspect. And that is also an important part of this investigation. So we can entertain a few questions, but you can recognize that I'll be somewhat evasive on details about the investigation itself. Chief, good morning. Uh, Jonah Kaplan, you're live on today's TMJ4 right now. Can you elaborate on what the threatening behavior was? At what point are officers kind of instructed to be able to engage a suspect like that? Uh, I really can't elaborate, elaborate on that right now. We know it's been reported to us. We're in the process of ascertaining whether or not there's relevant video of this. Clearly, we need to look at the video as well as to continue the interview of the officers to just ascertain what exactly happened. So we're not in a uh, in a position to elaborate beyond that general behavior. Yes. Do you have surveillance video of this? Well, we don't know. We're ascertaining whether or not, in fact, we do, and if we do, we certainly will review it. For clarification, this person was parked at a stop, or was he moving? No, this is an individual. This is a male, a uh, 56-year-old male, and he was at the intersection, is our information, waiting to go. Uh, onto um, onto the uh, main thoroughfare, at which time he was confronted. There's no there's no indications of any prior relationship between these individuals. Have you had any other incidents reported similar to this in the this area? Uh, this this particular area is extremely quiet, and you know we're very alert to patterns and trends. There's nothing remotely like this kind of random attempt to take somebody's car in broad daylight at seven o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's just a, it's a highly unusual set of circumstances. So as I say, we've got a lot to learn about the, uh, about the decedent. Chief, you mentioned a lot of credit goes to the individual who was uh, taken 
the, the driver of that car who yeah. was uh, confronted by that suspect. Yeah. So can you talk more about that, where citizen behavior, I mean, he immediately called 911, he said it was smart that he drove around, that he didn't just... I, 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 you know, I, I have not spoken to him. I can certainly say it's related to me that he was remarkably uh, prescient in his ability to, uh, A, he was smart enough to have his door locked, and B, he was smart enough to drive away rapidly and not sit there and try to sort it out, and C, he got a 911 right away. Um, his, uh, obviously, his assistance is invaluable because otherwise we would have had nothing but reports of uh, a shot being fired. Instead, we had a complete suspect of this individual and were able to locate him before he was able to do any harm to anyone else. Were there other people around when you were on the second floor? Our officers, uh, my information is that there were no, uh, no other citizens in the line of fire. This is a Monday morning. I mean, people are coming to business down here. Was there any, did traffic play a role in this and maybe preventing the response or were there a lot of bystanders? I mean, how, at what point do you go and just talk to, I mean, there must have been a thousand people at the U.S. Bank building just looking down. Well, obviously the uh, confrontation in the street took but moments and the rest of the confrontation occurred indoors. Um, so from that point of view, you know, the main witnesses ended up being the officers and the, and the, uh, and the victim of the attempted crime. Um, and as I say, the interviews are going to continue, and as I say, we're going to continue to look and see if there's a relevant video. Beyond that, I really haven't got any information to share. Thank you, guys. We'll get more information out to you as the day progresses. Appreciate Thanks, it. everybody. Thank you. Chief, you Police Chief Edward Flynn, Flynn confirming uh, that three MPD now. officers shot whom they said was an armed suspect inside the downtown transit center on the second floor of that building earlier today. Also reporting that the uh, robber was identified by or the suspect who was ultimately shot uh, had tried to rob someone earlier uh, in the morning and in fact fired a shot at that person as uh, the uh, robbery victim drove away from the scene. That victim then playing an important role in helping police uh, identify whom the shooter was and where that person was at the time. And again, uh, three Milwaukee police officers fired shots at an attempted robbery suspect. They say that suspect was armed. They tried, according to the chief, to get the suspect to drop the weapon uh, when that suspect did not comply and, in the chief's words, acted in a further threatening manner. That's when those three police officers fired on the suspect, shooting him dead. They did, according to the chief, uh, attempt to uh, resuscitate that victim. Fire department arriving on scene. The med units also tried to resuscitate the victim, but to no avail, that person is dead. 48 years in total police experience among the three cops who shot that suspect. Chief promising more information as the day continues. As he said, he will continue to look at the actions of his officers and perhaps get any other witness statements today. Today's TMJ4, as you can tell, is on top of this breaking news story, and we'll bring you updates. We've got another one scheduled in about 15 minutes, but certainly full coverage in our new newscast today. Now we'll take you back to the Today Show.